Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and thank you for joining me today. In today's exciting video, we have a set it and forget it workbook that is going to earn you money all by itself while you sleep. It's going to be amazing training that we're going to show you how to create campaigns and send those campaigns automatically without you doing anything at all. So it's going to be an amazing training. Let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, great to have you here today. This is going to be one of two part training. And in the first part, we're going to show you how to create a workbook that starts itself, downloads information, sends emails, saves, and closes all automatically while you do nothing but earn money. It's going to be an amazing training. We're going to learn how to become an Amazon affiliate. We're going to learn how to send product options to our list and if they click and purchase it, you're going to get paid. So it's great training plus it is the first training in which we're actually going to show you how to earn an income and this is an unlimited amount of workbooks that you can create so there really is an unlimited potential in this. So it's, it's going to be a really uh, unique and great training so I'm looking forward to share that with you. And basically the idea is this. Uh, you will sign up and I'll show you walk you through how to sign up and become an Amazon affiliate or an Amazon associate. And what that is is basically uh, when you send uh, products to people and they click on it if you are an affiliate and you have your affiliate ID or tracking ID uh, on those links then you get paid when they make a purchase generally it's anywhere from five to ten percent so it's a nice little income on the side that you can run and we'll show you how to get signed up get your tracking ID get that automated once you set this up and it's actually very simple it'll take you about five minutes to set up once you do that you will have an automated workbook that runs by itself whether it's uh, daily or weekly and it will really allow you to earn income you can have as many workbooks as you want so what we're going to do is we're going to download some data from Amazon for example and let's say we want to uh, offer books and then when we send those campaigns we're going to be able to send it to our list and let's say we have a list of like Excel books so we can send this automatically to our list on a schedule let's say every week they want to get some new book releases for Excel well we can do that and we can do that automatically without you even having to open up the workbook it's going to be doing it by itself running automatically that's part one we're going to show you download in part two of the training next week what we're going to show you is I'm going to show you how to build your list of subscribers we're going to right now we just have a list of some five sample data here but I'm going to show you how how to automatically add to this list and we're going to show you how to automatically add an unsubscriber list so that people can unsubscribe automatically and that's going to be in part two where we build the subscriber list and we're going to be using a WordPress site so we're going to go into a little WordPress training which is going to be a nice little bonus because I I do love WordPress and so if you don't have any experience with WordPress it's going to be a awesome little training that's in part two in part one here we're just going to focus on how we uh, obtain the download data the XML data in which we are going to send to our subscribers on an automated email list so let's get started with that let's go over some of the details the first of which we have an XML product link and this is basically the information in which we are going to obtain our products from and I'll show you how to get that we have an email subject and this uh, you'll see it says name and it's got lots of variables so that when the email does get created automatically that is replaced with the actual subscriber name for example John Abner's here's your request for your newest Excel books and we have a date plus we have our name here we have our first part of the email I hope you're doing well I just put this information in just as a test we wouldn't necessarily need their email or this date but I just want to make sure that you see that you can add the, their email and a date 
uh, within the email embedded, although you probably wouldn't want that. And then we have our list of books, and this is going to be updated automatically and dynamically each time you send based on Amazon's XML data, and I'll show you how to get that, of course. And then, of course, we have an ending, a last part of our, you know, email, so we can program this dynamically in as well. And it's going to be using an HTML email, which we've been over before, but it's going to be a really very cool training. So that is the email which gets created, and this contains the text before the content, the text after the content. We have some variables, name, email, date, and an unsubscribe link. This unsubscribe link, we're going to focus this on part two. So I'll show you that in part two. We won't worry about that, but I just put that there as a, as a placement because we're going to have that later. We also can track campaigns that were sent. We know what date was sent and we'll know how many emails were sent. We have our sheet two. We have our XML data. This is just the data that gets automatically updated, and I'll show you how to do that. In fact, uh, we're going to pretty much focus. The only f information we really want is in column F, and this information gets automatically converted into an email, but most importantly, we want to add our affiliate ID, and I'll go over that with you in a moment, uh, onto those links. And then lastly, we have a, a list of subscribers. If they have subscribed, we're going to say yes. If they have unsubscribed, it's going to be no. So for each of these, every time it says yes, it's going to send an email to them automatically. So it's super exciting. And so let's get started. As I had mentioned before, this uh, in order to earn money through Amazon, you have to set up an affiliate or they call it an associate. So the first step you'll want to do is set yourself up as an associate. So let's go ahead and go over that real quick. I put a link in here, right here, under affiliate program Amazon. If you're not familiar with it, Amazon is a global uh, massive billion multi-billion dollar company and they make and people make a lot of money through affiliates so uh, Amazon has a great affiliate system and they allow you to make earn money while you have it as an associate so if they click on a link that you're providing with your affiliate ID you will get paid so it's a really great program and it's global it works in every single country as far as I'm concerned so I believe it works regardless so the first thing you want to do is you want to get signed up and you go to the affiliate program amazon.com click on the join uh, now for free and they're gonna walk you through some steps as far as you'll want to make sure that you do create first thing you want to do is create an Amazon account and I already have my account here but um, so you will want to make sure that you get your credit so go through all the steps go through all of the steps that that are required for you to to join an Amazon account it'll be they'll ask you some information and then you can start using it once you get signed up you will get they will ask you for an affiliate ID I put it in Excel for freelancers so here is my affiliate ID this is credit it's also called tracking IDs they call it tracking IDs you can actually create multiple tracking IDs so for example my tracking ID is Excel for free uh, 20 and you can create additional tracking IDs so let's say for example I wanted to create multiple workbooks one for let's say new Excel books one for maybe software one for products you can create as many tracking IDs as you want so for now I have just one which is all I need for now but you can create simply click add tracking and you can add more so once you get signed up you will be given a tracking ID so this is very important we're gonna take this tracking ID this here tracking ID and we're gonna put it into our Excel field right here right under tracking ID so I have mine here you'll put yours here in your workbook you want to put it right here this is important because it is important that when we create these emails this tracking ID gets put onto the end of your list so for example if I click send campaigns now we just have it on display and you look at one of my products right here so you'll see when you click on that product you see it says that, that at the end of it says tag equals Excel for freelancers so when so the important thing is we download the XML links and then Excel actually puts your tag ID onto the end of the link and that's very important that's how you're gonna get paid that is how you'll make your commission when someone purchases it and let's go ahead and click and go to one of those and I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna copy this link and this is this is what they'll click and if they click the add to cart you get paid a percentage but I want to make sure that this is correct where right? you want to just double check it so we're gonna right click and I'm gonna copy this link 
and I'm going to go into my associates account once you you'll have your own associates account and I'm going to go into tools and I'm going to click link checker tools link checker I want to make sure that this link is going to be valid I want to make sure everything's working okay so put that site in here control V and check link alrighty now we see success the link tags to a valid tag or sub tag for your associates ID so that is what we want to see so we know we're working good all right let's back up a little bit and see how do we get our RSS feed here and what this is is this link right here it's an XML product link and what that does is on uh, through VBA it's going to get us all of this data and in this data through column F is what we're going to be including in our emails for all of our products so we want to get this XML data into Excel and I want to show you how we go about and do that for anything on Amazon at all so let's go ahead and take a look into Amazon and let's go ahead and browse we'll go to the Amazon's main site here we go and uh, what we want to do is basically you can browse for anything you want let's go ahead and take a look at software and let's go ahead and go into books and we'll type in Excel we can look at Excel but there's a lot of one and I want I want new releases let's go ahead and click new releases now another way we can browse down here let's go ahead and browse down because I'm looking for new releases and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at computers and technology and remember you you should be using any subject you want so in through let's say we have okay how about software okay because we're gonna focus on Excel and then inside software I want Microsoft and so we keep drilling down until we get to where we want okay here we go Microsoft Excel now this link provides us new releases in Microsoft Excel and I want to send these new releases to my people who sign up who want who want to know what the new releases are in Microsoft Excel and I want to send them perhaps every week so let's say they get a list of books every week so it's nice okay great now look now look at down this list any list you look at this RSS feed this is what we're looking for so this is what we want click on here and here we have it now now this is the RSS feed if you don't have this available let's go back all that changed look let's focus on this link all that changed is right here if we can also do it RSS backslash that's all we need to do right after GP that's it it's the same thing now we have our suite so it's the same thing all uh, Amazon did was add on uh, this RSS and backslash the rest is the same new releases books 4179 and then this code right here that's it that's all we need so this is the link we're looking for so we would take this link copy this link right here and we would want to paste that right into our email right here let's go ahead and click on that one more time just so I show you what's going on so we're following we have our uh, Microsoft new releases and Microsoft Excel guides here let's go ahead and refresh that make sure we've got the newest list go ahead and click down here subscribe to the new releases and Microsoft Excel guides great so we've got that here let's copy this link here control C copy that link and now we're gonna go into our Excel and where it says XML product link we're gonna paste that right in here I already have it there but that's it so that is the link that we have now we have our link now we can click update our Excel update the Excel XML data this is all automatic so you don't have to do any of this but we're just showing these buttons are just to do it manually but we have this I'm gonna show you how to do this fully automatic so you don't have to do anything at all anything I mean literally nothing set it up that's why it's called set it and forget it because you once you set it you can actually forget it all you need to do is go to PayPal and or your bank account and get the deposits that's it it's gonna be done so that link will update this table here let's just show you I'm gonna delete this and then we're gonna go ahead and click update XML and we'll go back into the XML data and then we can see it's all been all have been updated and remember this link is based on Amazon's link so Amazon let's go ahead and look at back in that site so we can look at the updates right because I want to show you the update details here let's go back and look at this here 
right up here. It says, our best-selling new and future releases are updated hourly. That doesn't mean that every hour we're going to get a new list, but uh, every day I'm sure there's something different. And maybe I'll want to send this every week because I want to make sure that there's kind of a considerably different list. I don't want users to get the same list. So this XML feed is updated hourly. And I don't think there's that many new Excel guides, but if you were to you know, click on like just books, let's say, and then we wanted new releases in books, right? If it's just books, of course, I think that would be updated. That, you know, you refresh that, you're gonna get something, a general category like that. Any link you want, any link you want, you just click the RSS feed, subscribe, and that's it, and copy this link. So that is all we need. So this one's just books, you know, if you have a book club or something like that, it's a great, you can send your book club new books every day, every week, every Monday, whatever you want. So once we have this link, we take it back into Excel and we copy that back in there where I have showed you. And that automatically updates this feed. Now, there's really nothing we're gonna use in this feed other than what's in column F because column F provides us with a channel, an item, and a description, all of it. So we've got that covered, so everything is there. And so it's a really great, so this is all we're gonna need. So what I'm gonna do is this is an HTML, basically if we, let's expand this a little bit. So we can see it's basically HTML and just says it's all the information. You've, now let's look at this. You've got the book number one and then you've got different links, but it's basically the same link uh, over and over again. But what I want to do is I want to add my tag ID at the end of this link. And I know that if I put a question mark and TAG equals and then EXL for free, I think dash 20, I think that's what it is, but it's okay. It's automated anyways, right? I know if I can do that, then I know that anytime someone clicks on that and purchases, I'm gonna get paid. So that's the critical idea. We want to make sure that we are adding this link because if we don't do that, we're not gonna get paid when they click a link. So we need to make sure that our ID there is always attached at the end of a link, just like that with a question mark. But I wanna do, I wanna have Excel do that automatically. And if I take a look at it, right, I see that this 4179-1, and I'm looking at the links here, and I look at this link right here, also dash one going down again, dash one, and then, but they're different. So for example, this link has dash uh, underscore two. So basically the second book has underscore two, the third book has underscore three. So what I need to do is I need to find and replace, right? I can't, I can't, I can't just look for this or this. So I need to have Excel find and replace. But if I use a combination of characters, I can do that, find and replace. But this three is different. So I've got a, in the code, we've got to compensate for that. So for each one, it's different. But we're gonna show you how we do that. So it goes all the way up to 10. The last one on the last link, 10, right here, you see that? This one is book num ends 10. Everything else is the same on the link, but 10 is the last one. So I wanna make sure that we attach at the end of this link our TAG ID, you know, our associates ID must be on the end of that. So that's what we're gonna do because when we create the emails, let's go ahead and do that once again. Let's go ahead and create those emails and we'll click send campaign. We just have one email that's being displayed. Your emails will not display. Once you have everything, you're gonna, your emails will send automatically. But for our purposes, I want you to see the email so we don't wanna send them and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and move this up a little bit so you can see it. And uh, let's highlight. So let's take a look at this. Let's hover over that and we'll see this is dash one, right? 4179 underscore one question mark TAG equals L Excel for freelancers. And the same thing with this link, one. And then this book has two. And then again, it ends with TAE, a question mark TAG equals. So that's what we're wanting to do. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we add this one's three. And I think it goes all the way up to 10, right? Because we got 10 books on this. So that's what we've done in this case. We've got 10, they're, they're coming through the XML feed, we'll get 10. So all we need to do is take this tracking ID and put it at the end of each link when we send it out. 
Now let's go into VBA and see how we make this all work. It's actually just two macros, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, into the Developers tab we go. Visual Basic to get into the Visual Basic. If you don't have the Developers tab open, you can always find it through Options and Customize Ribbon and then select the Developers Ribbon here. Alt F11 will also get you there. So let's get started with the code. There's really just two macros that we're gonna be focusing on. One is the create emails macros and one is the import data macro. Both very, very simple. So there's not much coding at all in this. So it's gonna be really simple and I just wanted to show you how we go about doing that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now the update data macro, basically all I want to do, and we've gone through this import data before in some other videos, but in case you're new, we'll go over it again. All I'm going to do is pretty much take this import link and I'm going to go into data. Let's go ahead on a, on a blank sheet so I can show you how that would work manually. And then we're going to go ahead and do it automatically. So data from web, and let's go ahead and get that XML link here into let's cancel that and let me let's copy this XML link right here and then go into sheet one from web we're gonna create a new connection from the web and then click yes on that and bring this over here we're gonna paste it in paste that RSS link in import and then we're going to import once more. We're ready to go. That is our XML import. We'll click on A1 is where we want that imported to once this gets downloading. A1, XML as a table is fine. And there we go. That's it. So that just basically that is exactly what we're going to be doing. And then, but it's through VBA. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So that's how it's going to be done. And I'll, we'll go ahead and delete that. We don't need that there back into the VBA. So that's what we're going to be doing through VBA, but we're going to be doing it on sheet two. That is the XML data sheet here as well. So let's go ahead and go over the parameters. So the first thing we want to do is E5 on sheet one is where our link is located. We need to make sure that there's actually a link in there. Of course, if the user has left this blank E5, there's no link to import. So we want to first check on that and make sure there is actually a link. So if sheet one E5 equals empty, then message box, please enter an XML link here before importing. And then we're going to go to range E5. Let me just make sure I'm going to, we cannot select a, if we're, if the user's on a different sheet, we cannot select. So we want to make sure sheet one, we just want to make sure activated. We want to make sure that sheet is activated. A bug will appear if we try this and the user's on sheet one, but if we automatically activate sheet one first, then select will be okay. So I wanted to add that in. So you see that if you ever have a bug, sometime when we're trying to select a specific cell, it's often because we are trying to select a cell on a sheet that is not active. So that's important. That's an important step. We don't want to miss there. All right, so let's go. We also want to delete any connections just in case, and uh, we've wrapped that on an on air zoom next if there is no connection. So it's important when we refresh it to delete it. We could also refresh it. There's a few ways to do that. So the next up, we're going to focus on our query, and it's a query table. We're going to be adding a connection. And we're going to be adding a URL. And where what is that URL? Well, it's sheet one E5. We know that already. That's the link we've placed there. We've already confirmed that it exists. The next step is we have to assign a destination. Where is it going to go? Sheet 2A1 is our destination. Everything else is just simple parameters. Right? We'll give it a name connection. We would say the field names are true, row numbers. We don't need that. We don't need to fill the formulas. You know, we just want the data. Preserve formatting, sure, that's fine. That's important because the formatting is going to give us that HTML formatting that we're going to use that HTML in our email. So preserving the formatting isn't important. Refresh file and open. We'll do this. I'll do this automatically. Uh, so we don't need to necessarily do that because we're going to run this just to make sure because it. I want to I want to make sure to run it in case the link has changed in case the user is updated so we'll rerun that we don't need that background queries fine refresh styles uh, save password none of this is too is really important uh, pre web formatting we want all the web formatting that's important because we want to make sure we have HTML formatting we need that that's important 
And uh, everything else, not so important, but everything else is false, really not so important. That's it. That is all that we're going to do. And all this does when we run it is it just updates that workbook. So it updates all the data inside Sheet 2. So that's, that's all that that macro is doing. And that just basically creates this list of data here. So now that we have an updated list, now what I want to do is I want to grab I want to grab this information right here. This is the information I want in column F. And it's that information we went over. That is all the book details. That has everything we need. And it has the formatting that we need also. You can see it's a, it's a lot of information. And that is all I really need. So the second macro is also very simple. So code-wise, this is a really simple workbook. We just have two macros. And most of these types of things we've been over before, but we're combining it in a new way that we haven't done before. So it's so it's, it's going to be a really a great uh, training. Next up, so we have create emails as our second email. And we've called this send campaign emails. We've dimensioned, we're going to be using Outlook. So Outlook app and Outlook mail is object. If you don't use Outlook, we have a video on uh, inserting emails without without Outlook. So we have creating emails about Outlook. You can check out that video. So we do have that available for you. We're going to dimension some strings, employee name, the subject, text before, text after, a main content, sub name, a subscriber name, subscriber email, tracking ID. That's the important part. We need that. Unsubscribe link. We're not going to use this in this training. That's going to be in part two. We'll go over that in part two, but I've just put it here as a, a placeholder so that I don't forget. Current date is the is a date. And then some long, some whole numbers, data row, the subscriber row, the last subscriber row, because we're going to run through all of our subscriber and then next campaign row. Okay, this we have application visible. This is something that we're going to be using uh, when we actually create the automation. I want to make sure that when Excel launches automatically and I'll show you how to do that a little bit a little bit later on in this training I want to make sure that the application becomes visible and I want to make sure that the workbook sometimes it it, it uh, is not visible it's not necessarily important for it to be visible uh, eventually but when you're first starting out I want you to see the workbook open I want you to see the emails created and I'll you know especially for this training I, I want you to see everything so because you can also launch Excel completely hidden where where it's uh, it does all of its work hidden so that's kind of a nice we're gonna the first we're gonna do is update our XML data this is the macro we just went over all this does is update the data in so that we always so that every time before we send an email campaign we're gonna update that data that's an important step we don't want to send people old data that we sent them already so we want to make sure that the data that we're sending them the books that we're sending them are all new so updating data is, is important Next up with Sheet 1, everything we're going to be doing from this point on, from this point forward in the macros with Sheet 1, so we can say with Sheet 1. The current date is now, so that's going to actually give us the date and time. We can use either one, date and time or both. The tracking ID, that's an important, that's in G5. If you'll remember, we put that tracking ID right in G5 here. This is our tracking ID, G5. That's a really critical important. Make sure you have a tracking ID, otherwise, you know, you don't get paid. I want to make sure you get paid a lot of money when you use this. So we need that in G5. That's a very important step. Next up, we're going to run through the data rows. What are the data rows 3 to 12? You may elect to find additional items. So we're going to only run 10 at a time. So we're going to go 3 through 12, 3 through 12. I want to send 10 books. So our import provides 10 at a time. There are other ways to increase this, but a 10 is probably enough for an email. Otherwise, you don't want to overwhelm people with products. But yes, you can, you can create additional products with additional links. There are ways to do that as well. And if that's something you really want to create, many I provide a training on that. For now, it's, it's simple. 10 should be enough. If you only want to send them five, just go three, you know, three through seven. That'll cover five. So we're going to go three through 12. I'm going to start at row three and move to 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this information in, in uh, column F. So that's what we want to do because that provides us all the information we want to supply in the email. So the main content, right, when we go three through 12, the main content, this is the text string, equals whatever the main content is already 
plus sheet two F in the data row, right? So it's going to loop through each data row, three, four, five, six, all the way to 12. And it's going to keep adding and adding and adding to this main content. This big text string is going to be our main content. This is all the, for example, this is all the book details that we want. So we want to keep building this list. The next step, we must add in our tag ID. This is the, this is the information. Next up, we want to replace. Now keep in mind, this could be different for you. Look at this carefully, 4179. This is very important. Every link, in, for me, ends in 4179. I haven't seen a scenario that it doesn't. For example, let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's look at this link, 4179, right? 4179. Look at it very carefully. This is an important part. It's a very important step. And then it has underscore five. This is what we're looking. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this, right? This is very, very important. We need to take this 4179 underscore and whatever row, right? The row five or the number five, actually the number five, the row is going to be, for example, if we're in row seven, right? This is five. So we need to subtract two. That's important, right? Look, row seven, number five, row 10, number eight. So we always need to subtract two. F remember this, if your links show anything different, all you need to do is put whatever is different in here. We just need to find something unique in these links. So 4179 underscore and the current row minus two. Current row minus two. That's what we're going to, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for, for that. So I'll show you in the code. We're going to replace whatever's in the main column. Let me escape out of there escape out of that okay now we're looking for 4179 and the underscore that's what I'm searching for what a, but now and, and I'm gonna search for the data row minus two so we're searching for all of this I'm searching for 4179 underscore and the data row minus two that's what I'm looking for now I have to replace all of this I have to replace it with the same, I have to replace it, and here's the replace. After the comma is where we're going to, I'm going to replace it with exactly the same, except I'm adding to that. Remember, I'm adding to that. I'm going to replace it with the same information because this helps me search where the end of the link is. So, and plus, so I'm replacing this plus the same information plus and, because I'm adding to it, a question mark, TAG equals and the tracking ID. This is important. This line of code is very, very important. Very important, because otherwise you don't get paid. So all we need to do is put the question mark and TAG and your tracking ID. You don't, you won't have to change any of this, right? The only thing you might have to change is 4179, because I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure that every single link that Amazon sends you is going to be 4179. It depends on your product or your search. So you may have to all, you may have to update this, but I think once, once the XML feed is in, it's not going to change. Per, for every time you refresh the feed, the feed's going to stay the same. The links are going to stay the same. Products will change, of course. So that, in my experience, that is what is uh, true and accurate. So make just make sure you're, if it doesn't end with four and nine, use the last four digits of whatever your link ends with and replace it here, and it won't change. So now we've got our main content. Now we have all of it. The main content, just from an email perspective, is this right here. It starts, it starts out right here at this book, and it goes all the way down to right, right, let's see, go, it sounds right all the way end here. It ends right here. Okay? So all this is your main content, right? Everything. That is our main content. All of our links have been replaced. So again, when we hover over here, we'll zoom in, and we look, and we see it ends in 4179 underscore 5 question mark, T-A-G equals Excel. Okay, so when someone clicks on that book and buys it, you get paid. All right, next up, now we've created the main content. Now we, now we have to go through our list of subscribers. And what I want to do is I want to go through our list of the people who have subscribed, and I want to send emails to only those people that have not unsubscribed. So we're going to go. First, we need the last row. These dates are not accurate, but don't worry about that. That'll come up in... Um, in the last part two, we're going to be adding subscribers and we'll make this date accurate. It's not, it's not really important for our purposes at, at all, really, for now. It's just a fake list. So, but eventually, we will have a good subscriber date here in the next training. 
It's more of a, just a placeholder here. But I want to find the last row. I need to cycle through from the first to the last. And I need to check send emails. If it says no, we don't want to send an email. If it says yes, yes. For right now, this is manual. In part two, all this is going to be automated. This list will grow automatically. The subscriber, unsubscriber is going to update automatically. So I'm really excited to bring that to you. But I'll break it up into two different parts. So as this one's going to be long enough, as it is, when I click my manual send campaigns, only one email is created, and that's because I only have one yes, and that, that's sufficient for our purposes for the training. If I were to mark them them all yes, if I were to mark mark this yes, we're going to get two that two emails that get created send campaigns. So one and two. Okay, so you see two emails now created. Each one has a different name. Each one has a different information. So. So basically, the yes determines that we send them emails. So we have to make sure that. So we're going to loop through that list here. The last subscriber row, sheet three, that is our list of subscribers, sheet three. A, we're going to use A in the last row. We're going to get the last row of subscribers, put it right here. Then we're going to cycle through. We're going to loop through those subscribers. For the subscriber row, sub row equals three, starting at three, to the last sub row. And we're going to, and all the way on, let's go ahead from here. See where it says next sub row? All this is going to be looped, all of this. So it's going to go through each one, each one, each one. So it's going to do all of that. And uh, let's go ahead and moving forward. If she three. D, D is where we're going to have our yes or no subscribe equals no, then go to skip subscriber. It's going to skip all of this and it's going to go right here, right before the next loop. So right here, it's going to skip it all. So that's important. Next up, we have the, the subject name is an E6, the email subject. We have a customizable subject. Let's just go through those real quick. Our subject here is an E6. Our text before content means you can put any text before. We don't need this, but you can see it shows the email and the date. I don't think that's necessary, but you can put that. It was more of a test. I want to make sure that you can add their email and add the date. It's working fine, so we don't need that. And the text after is located in E15. So we have, again, E6 for the subject, E7 for the text before, and the text after is located in E15. We can use these variables, these variables within anywhere within the content. It's going to be replaced with the actual data. All right, so we've got that set up. Now we'll go through back through the code. Subject E6, text before E7, and text after E15. So we've got that. We also need the uh, subscriber name. That's going to be in our subscriber list in B. The subscriber email is in column C in the subscriber row. So we've got that. Unsubscribe link, this is nothing for now. We're going to build this in part two. This is just a placeholder, and we'll build it in the next part. Next up, what I need to do is I need to replace all of those values. In other words, I need to replace wherever it says name, I need to replace it with their actual name. Wherever it says date, I need to replace it with their actual date. And same with email and the unsubscribe link. So, and as well, a return. In other words, a return is this. When we hit Alt Enter, it goes down a row, right? I need to replace all of those. Every time a user does that, I need to replace it with the HTML equivalent, which is BR. So you'll see that in the code. We need to replace that with BR, which is break. So we need to replace that. Since this is going to be an HTML email, we need to make sure that every time the user presses Alt Enter, which is actually character 10, character 10 in the ASCII code, we need to replace that with BR so that we convert an Excel character break with an actual HTML break. So we're going to do that in the code as well. So let's uh, move this on over here. We don't need to see that. But we do need to see our code, which is important. So the subject, we're going to be replacing five items. One, two, three, four, five items. The first of which is we're going to start with the, the subject. This is the subject that we pulled up from, from E6. So this is the original. Character 10 is Alt-Enter. That is the carriage return for new line. We need to replace that with BR, right? BR. Uh, less than BR, greater than BR. This is the character code for HTML that lets the user know to go to a new line or lets the HTML know to go to a new line. We're going to be replacing anywhere the user entered name with the subscriber name. 
email with the subscriber email, date with the date. Keep in mind this date right here, This if this creates an error for you, uh, it's because I think in 2003 and 2007 Excel, they didn't have this in VBA. So if you're using an older version, keep in mind this might create a, an issue for you. You can use now or you can use, um, uh, you can put your date in a cell. Like let's say you put the date in B1 and then you can change this with B1. I think date itself doesn't work for older versions of Excel. So keep that in mind. Unsubscriber link, this is nothing for now, but uh, we keep the replacement there. We don't have to do it later. So this will replace. So this gives them the ability to unsubscribe, which we'll show you in part two. We do the same exact thing for text before and text after so all of this gets replaced we have three different fields so we can do that next up it's pretty simple we just create the Outlook email let me take this out I don't think that's necessary uh, because uh, that's only for 15 that was a little test I'm running here we don't need that that's just for a specific a Outlook application okay it's fine just want to make sure so we can create our Outlook application very good here and then we're going to create the Outlook email so Outlook application is created here the new email is created with this line and now we're going to say okay with the new email what do we want to do to right is the subscriber email address the subject is the subject and the HTML body is what the HTML body is whatever it is and the text before and I want to put two new lines two new lines in the email plus the main content plus mm, two new lines again I guess we don't need break and break it's this is the same thing <laughs> this is the same thing there's two ways to show you and break and break but we don't need that that's unnecessary unnecessary okay so we've got break break two new lines and the text after and then we close the fonts out so that is it that's how we create the email now remember you this is just display this is going to show your emails once you get this going, you will not want display. You do not want to display it after everything works. You want to change it to dot send. Okay, make sure you change it. Dot send will send it without the email showing up. But for our purposes in training, we don't want to send it. We want to. I want to show you what we're doing. You will want to change this. This is something you must change in the code. Probably should change in the code. You you know if you have fifty or hundred emails, you know, certainly don't want them popping up dot send sends them automatically without displaying them first and then I want to know how many emails were actually sent because we record the number of emails in our graph here I'm recording the number of emails sent so and I want to know when they were sent so this table will help track the number of emails so we can know how many were sent maybe we can do a graph in there and maybe one day we could do know how many were clicked on how many were opened up if we get creative in this and we add to it in the future if that's something you want so we we want to know email sent equals email sent plus one this adds one every time an email gets created next up we're, we're done with the emails and we loop through that for all of our campaigns and then we set the next campaign row equals we need to I need to find the last row because I need to put our campaign information here but I need to know the last row plus one so I need to know what row to put our campaign sent on date and I need to know when to when uh, how many emails were sent so I need to know what is the last row so this line of code will tell us the last row plus one which means the first available campaign row then all we're gonna do is in column I we're gonna add the current date and in column this is actually date and time it's been formatting so and in column J we're gonna add the number of emails sent that's it also this is an important line this needs to be uncommented out like this. When you when you have our fully automatic, it's gonna every time this macro runs, it's gonna save the workbook, it's gonna close it, and it's gonna save it. True means save, false means don't save, but we want it saved. But we I don't want every time I run this macro, I don't want the workbook to close while I'm teaching you. So this comment it out, but make sure when you're ready to go, you uncomment this out and make it live so it closes automatically the workbook. The same thing for this workbook start. Send can every time this workbook opens, it's gonna it's gonna send those campaigns. But I'm gonna I'm gonna comment this out eventually. When I send it to you, I'm gonna comment this out because when you open the workbook, I don't want it to be created. Because but so make sure that when you're ready to go and everything's good, uncomment this out. Okay, that's this workbook open. So that's make sure because that we're gonna send it. Right now we're gonna we're gonna leave it 
uh, for our training purposes, we're going to leave it uncommented out. That's how we're going to get our automated email. So let's go ahead and close it. I've uncommented out and we're going to open it, go into send it and forget it. And you'll see right away after it opens, the emails get created. And why is that? Because on open, it's not commented out yet. So, okay. So we know how to get the emails created. And remember, you're going to use dot send. So these emails will not display for you. Once, once everything's right, these emails will not display for you. They'll just send automatically through Outlook. Okay, good. So we've got that. Now, the last step, because it's set it and forget it, I want to show you how to set this up on a schedule so it sends up. So let's say I want to send this every week, and I'll show you how to do that using a VB script. Now, what we do is we create a little script, and then we we run that. And I'm going to include this script with it. And the script looks like it's like a little bit of a notepad. Let's launch Notepad so you can see. Oh, let's let's open the script here. I'll go ahead and open it for you so you can see what it is that I have created. And it's on my desktop here. And I'll make sure to include it. And it's right click. It's called Application Run VBS. And we're going to edit it. Everybody has Notepad, right? Everybody on your computer, you have some kind of Notepad. All you need is this this you don't even need this it's just really one line I've commented these out because sometimes you need them but you don't need it in this case so all you need is really one line of code and the important thing is you need to make sure this link here is the link to your actual file link and what this is gonna do is run it automatically so for example right so so notepad right so this is notepad right let me change this look in here Here's the application app. This is really a .txt file. So if I change that extension .txt and click yes, and now when I open it, it's just going to open edit. It's just it's just a, it's just a text file. That's all it is. Notepad. I'll use Notepad to open it. So you see, it's a text file. Except I've changed the last three digits to VBS, and I'll give you the VBS file. But remember, you need to change this link. Whatever your location is, wherever your Excel location files located in change this file link and it will automatically update what is the purpose of this well the purpose of this is to automate so let's take a look at this dot vbs i'm gonna change it back now when we double click on that and click yes when we double click on that it's gonna run oh i gotta close it first it can't run if it's closed if it's open let's close it and uh, we'll save it all right now it's closed and we'll go ahead and run it and it'll take a moment to open up and once it runs it'll run everything automatically there it is you see the emails got created and that's it and it's done so we need so we know that the VBS when we double click on the VBS everything runs really nice right so we know that we know that that's working well so let's figure out how to get this automated on a schedule we can do that through both windows and mac have the ability but let's go through i've got a windows here and a mac is different when i right click on my windows 10 so let's go into computer management and the task scheduler what i want to do is i want to schedule a task in windows this is a task scheduler and we're going to create a basic task and we can click we can create a basic task or task either one of them will not will work just fine and great we'll give it a name and then we don't need to give a description and then we're going to go next what is the trigger how often do you want this let's say weekly and i want this to launch let's say every week on monday at uh 10 40 a.m okay fair enough actually let's do that let's do 10 42. okay so next i want it to launch every monday and i want it to start a program what do i want to start up i want to browse for that vbs file that i just created that's on my desktop right here and uh, I've got two of them here. There's this one right here. So that's the VBS, right? That's the one we were just looking at. It's got to end in VBS. Click Next, and we're done. All right. And then we can refresh it. So we're done. So that is it. When we look at the task scheduler here, and we see the one that we just created, which is probably going to be all the way at the bottom, testing one, two, three. Here it is. It's ready at 10.42 a.m. every Monday of every week starting on today, 7.9. So that's it. Run only when the user is logged in. So that's it. And when we run it, it'll run automatically, of course. But if we were to run it now, you see the emails get created automatically. That's it. So it's going to run automatically by itself every Monday 
and it'll close automatically. And that's it. It's that simple. And that is how you can create an automatic income stream. And you can create multiple workbooks. You can have 10, 20, 30 of these workbooks all working for you, all on different subjects. So it's an amazing part one of the training. In part two, I'm going to show you how to capture email addresses and how to bring those email addresses into Excel completely unattended and automated so you don't have to do anything. So that's going to involve a WordPress. So I'm really excited to bring that to you, something a little bit different. We're going to bring it right into Excel. And I'm going to show you how to also do the same with unsubscribe. So that means every time someone clicks on unsubscribe, they no longer get those emails and that is also going to be fully automated so it's going to be really exciting part two make sure you check back with us in a week and see that if it has not been released yet thank you so much for joining us it's been a great training i'm looking forward to sending more please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, we will make sure to uh, get you these videos every week like and share the videos so i appreciate that have a great day thank you so much Ooh.